All right, we're going to leave the scoreboard for the time being and hop over to an interview with our first um, uh, problem author, who is Colin Siles. Let's Hello. go here. I need to change the, uh, the text under your name. <laughs> <laughs> so Colin authored uh, three problems uh, this competition, uh, including uh, two of the problems in that first four set of four um, that we really saw people attack very quickly. Yeah, so um, you authored 13 floors, alphabet soup, and followed the prize. So that's problems B, G, and F, which I think have all been solved. Yes, all, all of those problems have solutions at this point. Um, so can you sum summarize your problems, Colin, and uh, how they're solved? Sorry, I don't think I heard all of that. My audio like cut out for a second. Oh, good. Uh, we we're just summarizing. We we're just telling everyone what problems you authored, and um, can you tell us like what they are, how they're solved? Uh, yeah. Just so the three problems I, I authored were pretty simple. They were all solved in like the first ten minutes. Um, so the first one was thirteen floors, and that just requires a simple if statement. So if the floor is at Four, 4, 13 or above, you just have to add 1 to that number and then print that number out. And if it's less than 13, you just print the original number out. So um, pretty easy, and most teams have already solved it. Um, the second one was follow the prize, um, which Sam, you already kind of talked about. Um, it's a pretty simple algorithm, um, but it takes a little bit to kind of understand the problem and, and what it's asking you to do. Um, it might seem a little bit complicated, but really it's just asking you to like iterate through all the different swaps that are being performed. Um, and kind of update a single integer number as you as you go through them. Um, not too terribly difficult. Um, the last one, alphabet soup, is probably the hardest of the three I did, even though it's it's still not very difficult. Um, kind of the way I approached solving it was just dumping all the letters in the input string into a set, and then kind of determining um, which letters are missing from that set, and, and printing out the appropriate um, output based on that. So how do you get inspired to write the stories for these problems? <laughs> Um, I wish I had a really good story for you guys, but I, I don't. Mm -hmm. I just uh, I knew we, that we needed some easier problems, so I just sat down and tried to come up with some stuff, and, and this is what came out of it. So, <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's one way of doing it for sure. Um, yeah. So obviously, uh, these problems are fairly easy, but were there any catches that you expect students to to you know have a some trouble getting it over, or do you think that they're going to be fairly straightforward? Uh, I think they're mostly going to be straightforward. Um, maybe some of the solutions could be a little bit less efficient than others. Um, I've taken a look at like some of them for alphabet soup, and they will kind of like um, instead of using a set, they'll kind of iterate through um, each letter in the alphabet and see if it's in the entire string, which will kind of iterate through the string multiple times, and that string can be very very long. But it looks like that's still like well within the time limits. Um, so, do we actually just want to? We could actually take a look at which the, uh, which team is this that we're? Uh, Spanish Inquisition was the first to solve all of the prize. If we want to look at that real quick and see how they did it. Yeah, let's uh, let's pull up. Let's let me get the uh, name of this team correct for. Problem G? E, problem F. Although they F. were also the, no, they have not yet solved problem G. Uh, first team to get problem G was Java coders. Uh, we're actually. Which one are we going to look at? Problem follow the prize or, or alphabet soup? I figured F since that's uh, Colin's problem. Alphabet soup is also Colin's. Oh, is, did I get that wrong? Both F and G. Oh, it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, we could look at G as well if you so like. Let's look at Spanish Inquisition. Are they? Did they actually solve? Who who was first to solve on this? Java Spanish coders. Spanish Inquisition apologies. was first to solve. F Java coders was first to solve. B. <laughs> this is the first time we are doing this live, everybody. Clearly. 
Um, so let's just take a look at this. Uh, looks like they solved in Java. And let me switch oh, yeah. to the solve analysis. Um, so they solved this in Java. Uh, looks like... So this is kind of this... what you talked about, Colin. One of the um, solution approaches I looked at. Right, so this contains is going to scan through the entire string, which is going to be fairly inefficient. Um, and they're doing so, it for every single letter in the alphabet. But So how did you expect them to approach this problem? Um, by, kind of by instead of um, iterating through the string multiple times, iterate through the string once, and then place those letters into a set. Um, that, that takes some time. Yeah, and that would have been an O of N solution. This here is O of N squared, but uh, it's still efficient enough. And I did actually, when we were working on uh, developing the problems, I did try a few O of N solutions, and they, they passed under the time limit. So um, I think it's good, though, that they're able to solve uh, with um, multiple different uh, uh, approaches, even, even ones that are slightly less efficient. Yeah, these are, you know, I think one of the, uh, it's really easy to sort of pick up coding on your own, take a class in high school. Um, but one of the things college is good for, I think, is learning those more advanced data structures. And so uh, you can definitely see that here. So of your problems, uh, B has been solved currently. Let me scroll down here. Looks like 40. 40 teams, uh, F has been solved by 13, and G has been solved by 10. So at the end of the competition, how many teams do you expect to have solved each one of these problems? Everyone's going to solve 13 floors. Um, technical difficulties aside, I guess. Uh, and then as far as um, Alphabet Soup and Follow the Prize, I think Follow the Prize will be probably solved slightly more than Alphabet Soup. I'm really not sure how many teams are going to solve it, though. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the skill level of the teams are. Well, I've been impressed with the skill level so far. Uh, there's a yeah. lot of solved. We've, we've had only three problems uh, have yet to be cracked by some team, which is going, which means that this is going to be a, a, a real um, nail biter coming down to the last three problems, which are very difficult. Um, however, they have a lot of time. Um, we're only 25 minutes into the competition, so those could be cracked as well. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say before we uh, um, finish this interview? All right. Uh, I think we'll call it there. Thank you for, Thank joining, you for us. joining us. And uh, writing some excellent problems. Yeah, thanks for thanks for putting up with the first ever live uh, <laughs> interview. <laughs> <laughs>